Hey, come on down. Just down here in the basement, uh, doing a last inventory of the remaining canned goods. Uh, it's been crazy. Can't believe it's been only four months since the collapse. Seems like a, a lifetime. I remember the first day it happened, and we, uh, we preppers, we knew. We knew what was happening. But even after the store shelves emptied out, people thought, oh, a couple days, everything will be fine. And a couple days later, the stores posted the signs, closed until further notice. And after a couple weeks, people ran out of food. They were sharing with family and friends. And then it started getting really rough, really rough. People were eating stuff they swore they'd never eat before. You know, they said, I'll never eat plain rice. This is America. I heard people are actually starving in the city. Uh, in this city, not in Appalachia, not in the third world, people are starving in my city. I mean, people have been going door to door begging. And I heard some people were going door to door threatening. So uh, we put out our SHTF welcome mat, big old sheet of plywood with nails sticking up so people can't even get to our door on the porch to knock on it. And of course, before the collapse, we did a lot of house hardening. We put rose bush bushes under every window so they're not an attractive target to, to crawl in with all the thorns. And everything's well lit when we have power. Uh, during the, the blackouts, no light. We've got total light discipline. We, we made blackout curtains out of uh, garbage bags, black, black plastic garbage bags, and uh, we don't want anyone knowing. We got plenty of flashlights and lanterns and stuff because that just makes you a target. But when we do have power, we've got the place lit up. And, of course, Russ on the other side of the backyard, he's, he made a pact with us. Uh, we, we hear him in trouble, we'll go running, and vice versa. So, so far, no breaking attempts. Um, just freaking me out. I, I, I know people are hungry, and I, I know those reports of people starving are true. Uh, the flea market, I, I call it a black market. It's like something out of the third world. I won't go there. I went there once, that's it. It's, uh, it's, it's only a mile from here, but it's, go, it's like going into, you know, Iraq or something. Uh, if you can get a couple cans of food, you know, you got to give in, in trade, you know, they don't want greenbacks anymore. You got to give in trade a, an arm and a leg, and Whoever, I don't know if they robbed a, a warehouse or something, but there's guys down there that are cleaning up. I mean, people are bringing big screen TVs and trading it in for, uh, you know, two flats of uh, canned goods. And uh, it's dangerous. People told me before the collapse, hey, stock up on bullets for barter. Stock up on alcohol, cigarettes. But I don't want to go to that flea market as it is. I certainly don't want to go with bullets or alcohol and put a target on my back for kidnapping or they follow you home or something like that. We, we don't go. We keep a low profile. We stay home most of the time. Uh, and, uh, you know, we're set. Springtime comes, we'll plant the garden and we'll be okay. We'll be okay. I think long term with enough dry goods, we'll be okay. That's, at least that's what I think. We're certainly a lot better off than a lot of people right now. But I mean, even at the market on Mondays and uh, Thursdays, the, the hunters come in from out in the, the counties. And, uh, you know, they bring in fewer and fewer deer every time. Yeah, I, I know what's happening. The, the game's disappearing. You know, before the collapse, these macho types, oh, if it ever hits the fan, I'll go and live off the land. I read that before the collapse, there were 30 million deer in the United States for 300 million people. Not to mention the fact that they're not evenly distributed. I mean, even if we had one deer for every 10 people in this city, how long would that last? It's just, it's just crazy. And... And the hunters know it. The price keeps going up. Every time they come in with fewer deer, they're charging more for that meat. And uh, it's just waste. Everything is waste. There were thousands of head of cattle in the, the, in the counties out there where they just didn't have gas right after the collapse to get them feed or to get the cattle in the market. And just waste. You know, all these cattle just died and, and, and didn't serve nobody. And then that's just the... the the whole theme these days is everything is waste, except in our house. We, we have a strict discipline. Nothing goes in the garbage until I check it, because there could be a use for it. But, uh, well, we haven't had a break-in yet. You know, I'm always afraid of people looking in our trash to, you know, get, gain intelligence, but uh, I won't be found out that way. I'm not too smart for that, but uh, no break-ins, you know. So uh, if it comes to it, we've got, 
We've got the means to defend ourselves and the will. You know, I didn't do all this prep work to see my kids or my wife die of starvation. I'm sorry that other people are, but I just have to obey the the good book and and take care of my family first. That's my chief responsibility, and and we have shared, uh, but we do it pretty surreptitious. We don't want people knowing what we have. So, well, I better get going. I've got to go over there and inventory the dry goods uh, in some of the uh, the Rubbermaid containers marked Christmas ornaments and Christmas lights. <laughs> It's where I got a lot of the rice and, and the beans and the dry goods. I figure if somebody breaks in and they're in a hurry, they're not even going to bother opening up those containers, so I mislabeled them. But uh, it would be something for them to break into this house, I'll tell you. But you just never know. So I better get back to work. You take it easy.